Hey, man. What's going on? <laughs> Gosh, have you ever heard of uh, Gregor McGregor? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Is that is that sounds like a oh man, what am I thinking of? Is there like a weird cartoon character in one of the Spy Kids movies? You know what I'm talking about? Come what? on, come down memory lane with me real quick. Okay, I can't I can't pick Walk this name out. It's Spy Kids three. Spy Kids three. It's yeah. the cartoon that all the kids are watching. Like not a cartoon. It's like a it's like a yeah. Like and a the Barney. guy's got the egghead thing. Is oh, it an egghead? I don't know. I don't know. I kind of thought I knew what you're talking McDougal about. McDougal or something sure. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me look at up. Spy Kids. Bro, we have to. My brain's not going to let me go by. Oh, no. Um, Spy Kids 3 cartoon character. Uh, not cartoon. It's like because they're in the game. They're in the yes, video game. Yes, yes. Um, um, oh, come on, brain. We got this. Sorry for your listener. <laughs> Sorry for me listening. <laughs> Sometimes I listen Sometimes to these I episodes and, in, yeah. and I go, come on, come dude. On, bro, just bro, just skip it. Roll come on. This yeah, this thing. doesn't matter. This isn't important. <gasps> Uh, yeah, I'm not seeing. Oh no! Uh, Video game through. character. Yeah, just I'm look up Spy Kids. Well, I'm looking at the character just look up list. Spy Kids. Gertie Giggles. Gary Giggles. What? No, those are the. That's the other family. What's the bad guy in the first one? Gregorio Man. Cortez. No, that's the actor. I was at the, the no dad. Antonio Banderas plays. Dang, right, oh, man. Here's the thing. I can't remember the plot of a single Spy Kids movie right now. Yeah, all I know rough. is Stallone is like a Transformer or something like that. <laughs> Should we watch Spy Kids three? Do a reaction, <laughs> guys. Join us on Twitch <laughs> for, uh, for Spy Kids. For Spy Kids. <laughs> we do not have the rights to do that either. Yeah, we just win for it. But it's okay. Twitch doesn't care. Google would care. Twitch doesn't. Care oh at my all. gosh. Are we really not going to be able to find it? Yeah, I don't, Dang, I don't see anything, man. All right. Yeah, I'll do a it. Google. I'm going to you know, my work day is over. Yeah, to be honest, we yeah. we're starting the day with this. We're recording kind of early in the morning and uh, I'm not going to get anything else done for us today because I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to show you guys how tup, I made a million dollars a tup, month tup in a way. selling Tupperware to dummies from the 1560s. <laughs> we have so many good ideas on this. Yeah, we, that we got to start bleeping the heck out of our marketing schemes. Man. <laughs> wow. And we have a map of this. Yes, we actually do. Uh, Who's we don't say we the United States government things I learned last night. Fegan floop. Fleegan floop. Floops. Fooglies. Oh, I do remember. It's the that. first. Uh, it's the first one. The first. With that's the, what I was with the hands. I hate everything spikes. about you. You, guess, you said I was three. like, just you look. Said, up. I said, yeah. Kids three. I, for some reason, I thought maybe Spy Kids three, but then you were like, it's Spy Kids three. <laughs> I said, look up all of them. And you know what I did? I googled Spy Kids villains. The top result <laughs> was was Fegan Flugan Flopper. That's fine. Fegan Floop. Fleegan Floop. Floop Floogleys. Whatever. The big thumb people. The guys that I look like. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Uh, Gregor McGregor, not related at all to Fleeg and Floop. You know, I or, was on a flight with Julian once. Uh, Megan Trainer's husband. Okay, is what he's known for now. <laughs> Did you know that? I don't know who Julian is. The kid from Spy Kids. Oh, really? Yeah, the little curly he, haired kid. He, he married Megan Trainer. Yeah, he's all about that base. <laughs> and so, uh, but I was on a. He flew Southwest. Good for him, bro. Yeah, good for you him. You know, out of Burbank. We were on the same flight, and I looked like one of those thumb people. So I was like, this might go down. Yeah. You know? Did you say something new? I well, I was afraid. Uh, you should have. Yeah, he knew I was there though. His, you, his watch was like, you know, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> he still wears. I got it. on. I was like. <laughs> I'm a spy kid. <laughs> I'm a spy kid too. <laughs> I'm a spy kid too. All right, he's a Gregor McGregor. Not Gregor. spy kid two, two. though. Uh, also, also I'm a spy kid, but two was objectively the best one. Objectively, okay, subjectively, sure. no. Objectively, sure. best. So Gregor McGregor. Gregor Gregor McGregor uh, was born in 1786. Um, he's a <laughs> Scottish um, person. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm hesitant to give him any title because uh, okay. he didn't earn it. Okay. Any of the titles he got. Um, was he a con artist? Kinda. Uh, well, yes, exactly. Yeah, he's a con artist. Uh, which I was thinking about it today, actually, when I was researching this this morning. Um, Gregor McGregor, 
because of the name you did the same connection. You connected it to Connor McGregor. Is that where the name Connor came from? Was the first Connor just a con man and they started calling him Connor and now we have all these Connors running around that you probably shouldn't trust. Ah, <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't I don't have an answer to that question. I just wanted to throw that out okay. in the universe. Uh, anyways, speaking of Connors, <laughs> Uh, Connor, our video guy, yeah. got engaged. Congrats he to him. Did. Congrats, you know? Connor. Well, hopefully they're still engaged yeah. by the time this comes out. <laughs> you know, sometimes those. Are you still with that girl? <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking to me now? Yeah, yeah, still with that girl. Okay, yeah, we're still married yep. for the past I, five I years. Just want to know. <laughs> you gotta check in every once in a while, you know. <laughs> it is the worst. I did that to one of my Starbucks baristas the other day. Yeah. I was like, hey, how's Ben? And she was like, we've been divorced for 17 years. No. <laughs> She's like, Ben's been dead for 30 years. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thought I saw him in here the other day. <laughs> You're like, hey, how's, how's Nelson? Uh, Nelson and Mandela, Mandela in prison in the 90s. <laughs> no, I swear he did not. He got released. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, so Gregor McGregor. Uh, he uh, nothing super important happened in his life until he was a young adult when he joined the military. Um, okay, and he was um, he was a Scottish person, but this was one of the times where the Scots and the Brits were like the same thing for a little bit, uh, but they weren't happy about it, you know. Sure, like they were, you know. Uh, and so uh, he joined the Republican side of the uh, Venezuelan they war. Were the same thing, but they weren't happy about it. Yeah, it was like it yeah, was like, like step siblings. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, oh, yeah we're yeah. family, but we're family, like, but like we're not nah. cool about it yet. Yeah. yeah, later they'd be cool about it. But sure. For a while, they're not. Um, and so he was in the Venezuelan That's War for my Independence dad. in eighteen twelve. <laughs> <laughs> You're not allowed to call him dad. I don't. That's I call him my Keith. dad. I call him Keith. <laughs> I call him Keith. <laughs> uh, Guys, his name is Keith. And he, he was, uh, he was. Is that how the name Keith came along? <laughs> Go ahead, sorry. Stupid <laughs> joke. He he was in this war in eighteen in eighteen twelve. Uh -huh. um, but he was one of the guys uh, in the army who was what you would call um, not A good at war because uh, yeah. he would just hide the whole battle, and sure. then he'd come out with s'mores and be like guys look what I oh gosh did oh, there a war here <laughs> <laughs> missed that did not get the memo I just just I was just in the other room making yeah, some s'mores he's a practice squad guy <laughs> who's got the championship <laughs> ring in his house he's like yeah I was there it's crazy yeah, it was awesome um, but he actually was and that's a pretty decent example because he was um, a, a smooth talker so he managed to work his way up the ranks even though never actually being in combat like he was just around combat um, and he managed to like smooth talk his way okay up the ranks and eventually get like a commander role where he was commanding troops and uh, he had a couple of decent victories uh, from uh, his commanding career uh, that led to <laughs> okay uh, that led to him eventually uh, gaining more and more command eventually started having a bunch of failures and flops but but Grew his his influence in the military, sure, uh, and became uh, close friends somehow uh, with uh, <laughs> King George Frederick Augustus, uh, who was the king of the Mosquito Coast, which is now um, in Central America, like Honduras area. Um, they call it the Mosquito Coast because there's a lot of mosquitoes there. Sure, it was aptly named. Yeah, um, and this king, um, for some reason. Uh, well, the reason that we actually do do have a decent idea of why uh, just gave um, uh, uh, Gregor Gregor McGregor McGregor uh, 8000 I think Hold on, let me double check that number uh, mosquitoes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you need McGregor. Hey, smooth talker. <laughs> I'm going to give you 8,000 mosquitoes. <laughs> Go ahead, count them. Yeah, I, count them. I, just, yeah, I want to make sure I didn't miss any. They're I don't want to I don't want to uh, undercut you on these mosquitoes. I'm giving you lots. Um, no, yeah, he he got 8 8,000. Oh no, 8 million acres. 
oh. uh, way off eight million acres, Just which is bit. about twelve thousand square miles of land. Because uh, he's a smooth talker in the mosquito territory. Uh, I don't think he talked his way into it. Hey man, um, this land's got mosquitoes. <laughs> no one wants it, but uh, I do. Y- yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, and, and the, he was like, he was like, I'll like give it to gifted you. Gifted him the land. Uh, kinda, kinda. He gifted it to him, but in exchange, so he sold it, kinda. But it wasn't like it wasn't like McGregor came and was like, "Here, give me all this land, and I'll give you this." He was like, "He was like, hey, like if you give me some stuff, I'll give you a bunch of land." Okay. Uh, but it was land that was unusable. It wasn't fertile. It was overrun in rainforest and overrun in mosquitoes and all other kinds of bugs that cl- carried disease and malaria and stuff yeah. like that. So it was it was useless land to him. Um, but he knew that if he offered it to McGregor, he could get some jewelry and some rum. Uh, and so he's like, you give me some rum and jewelry. I'll give you 8 million acres of this land that I don't need. Okay. Um, and so everybody's simpler everybody's, times, <clears throat> man. simpler <laughs> times. I tried to offer that to bank of America. The last, yeah. week, you know, yeah. I went and I was like, can I buy a house? Yeah. I was like, I got some jewelry <laughs> and rum. And they were like, what is this? A pawn shop? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, honestly, what's the harm in asking? Honestly, I could see like a pawn shop where the guy does real estate on the side. Does real estate <laughs> on the side? And he's like, um, yeah, I got something for you. Like, yeah, yeah, we'll take that Rolex that you found. Uh, and uh, <laughs> why don't you find yourself uh, this nice two thousand square foot home <laughs> on Independence two baths, Avenue? Two baths. Two beds. I don't know. That's a lot of lot of square feet for only two beds. Two beds and a bowling alley in the basement. I guess. <laughs> How many square feet is your home? Uh, we've got about sixteen hundred of livable space, uh, but yeah, we have an unfinished basement. Yeah, me and Alex both were like, okay, bro. <laughs> we, have a, we have an unfinished basement. What does so they don't that count. mean? We have an unfinished <laughs> basement, so they don't count it. Sixteen hundred usually you just call space. it finished space. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so you, you could have just said sixteen hundred. You didn't have to be like <laughs> we have sixteen hundred <laughs> square feet that you can survive it. Yeah, <laughs> but but the rest is infested with rest, mosquitoes. The, of the square feet was the fire and bats. <laughs> <laughs> we did have a bat. In our- so he gave him all this land that's not usable. Gave all this that's, land that's not, not livable. That's not livable. Yeah, so it was really zero square feet, but eight million square feet, also square acres. Um, eight Again, million, very a, different. A lot of land, uh, which is actually larger than Wales. Um, it was the amount of land that he oh. got there. <laughs> not you the know animal. where my brain went. Yeah, <laughs> not the animal. <laughs> it's a country that's part of the UK. You, uh, you knew where my brain went. <laughs> I was like, yeah, obviously. He's he he like, man, this is bigger than a whale. Bigger than a whale. <laughs> well, that would check out because he had the idea. Afterwards, he said, you know Open what? I've got Sea World. He's like, I got eight million acres. <laughs> Open Sea World. <laughs> He's like, I got eight million acres. What makes sense to do with this eight million week acres is rent it out. Is put some properties up, rent it out, um, and then cash started, flow it. Yeah, start an Instagram about uh, being a godly yeah. landlord. Um, <laughs> I love the Lord and exploiting people. I love the Lord and the land. You know what I'm saying, landlord. <laughs> hey, I'm a land king. So, uh, so he started putting together a plan to try to sell this land. Yeah, uh, and then he went there and was like, "Oh, no one's gonna buy this." So instead of, I got scammed out of some rum. Yeah, yeah. He's like, "I lost my rum, and I got all this useless land for that." Hey, thanks for checking out this episode. If you like it, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Uh, speaking of future episodes, we have a ton of past episodes. Uh, we have a back catalog of well over a hundred episodes. Uh, so check those out. My current favorite is Nellie Bly. She was a journalist from the early 1900s who totally changed the industry, especially for women in the industry. Super cool story, but also kind of crazy. Uh, some of the things that she did. Uh, we had a lot of fun in that episode, so check that out. Uh, don't for- forget to subscribe, but ultimately just thanks for being here. And so what he did instead is he said, what if this land was useful land? What if this land was, I don't know, the country of Poyas uh, and okay. <laughs> and what if I w- sat down uh, and I wrote a book about the history of the country of Poyas, 265 pages. 
Uh, and I, are you making it like an ancient country that doesn't exist anymore? <clears throat> no, no, it's a country that still exists. Great. Um, and and what if the king made me the prince of that country and sent me over to the UK to sell plots of land in a new settlement that they're establishing along the coast, and then it's an investment property for people. And so he he did that. He made these maps, established the country of Poyas. Um, McGregor made up a right. bunch of Saint cities Joseph. all along this land, um, which this the story is that it was a native nation that the Scottish people settled and built a bunch of things and then they cooperated and but became, there was nothing there. Yeah, there's nothing at all there. It's just uninhabited. Rainforest. Oh, okay. Um, and so he said that he made up all these cities and towns named them all created this history created this government system. He commissioned an artist to create this etching of what the port city of St. Joseph looked like. Um, and then even went as far as to print currency uh, for it. Uh, oh, looks like a so, birth certificate. Yeah, it does look like a, but that's what money used to look like by order of his highness Gregor because <laughs> he's the he's the prince. Okay, he, the, the Kazik of the Koyas, Kazik. Yeah, which was I like that the word for prince. I like Kazik. Yeah, so he's the Kazik of of Koyas. Name my son that. Uh, and he went. Um, Call him Zeke. Yeah, and he yeah he, he established. My name this. is Kazik. He established oh, geez. these these deeds where you could purchase the land, and he he made this look super official. He sure. put a lot of effort into making this look like a real place. But he owns it. I mean, he could just do it. I mean. Technically, but if you remember our episode about uh, the principality of Sealand, there's some things you have to do to get recognized as a nation. He, I don't think he wanted to go through all the, the process okay. of becoming a recognized nation, but he wanted everybody else to think that the heat already was, done it. That it, yeah, it has, had been for a long time, and it was sure. already booming, and it was already. Yeah, but if growing. you do, if you just okay, <clears throat> I mean, it's true. Like if if he would have just went through the process, like it may have taken a little bit longer. But he's already put a lot of yeah, money. Yeah, I'd rather into this. write a fake book. I don't. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So he he spent a lot of money. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, opening this up, and basically what he said was he said he's selling timeshares. Yeah, he said he said if you buy a plot of land on this island on in the country of Poyas, he said I can guarantee a six percent return on your investment because the city is the country is booming right now. And he says the nice thing about the Poesian people <laughs> is they are so friendly. They'll welcome you with open arms. They'll help yeah. you build your settlement. They'll and they'll even help you farm the land once once you're you're in. And they'll do it for free because they're just super friendly people. Like they're so nice. They just love. Go do it for free. They just love guests. Yeah. <laughs> they're just like, oh, are you here to? Did you invest? Are you here to make money off of this? Like we'll do it. We'll help because they're money just such nice no, people. Yeah, we're just really nice. Yeah. Like we don't need. You don't need to pay us. That you will just we'll just help you out. It sounds like the new history books are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> they were just so friendly. They were just so friendly. They did it for free. They just did everything uh, for free. I don't they know if so that's friendly. accurate. Uh, and then, uh, <laughs> uh, and then he uh, he changed his name uh, as well uh, to gosh uh, Thomas. Oh, what did he change it to? Thomas McGregor. <laughs> no, it was worse. It was Thomas Mc. Sneaky, <laughs> make sneaky. What are you talking about? <laughs> Gosh, my notes are what's so your, out of order today. What's your name, Thomas McSneaky? <laughs> oh, oh, seems like a reputable does. person to do business with. <laughs> that is, that's yeah. I Thomas you. McTruth Teller. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I could not find. I had this in my notes. I could not find it in my notes. It's something just just as awful as Thomas McSneaky. It's Thomas Mc something. <laughs> I think just, no, Thomas McSketchy. Well Thomas look. McSketchy was what it was. Uh, no, which is sketchy. <laughs> oh, like for real? That's what it was. McSketchy. Yeah. I think that was where before people thought of sketchy as sketchy, though. Do you think that's where they they came from? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty big sketchy of you. And then they dropped the mick. Um, hey, drop the mick. <laughs> that sounds like a dance move. Drop the mick. Drop the mick. It sounds like someone who doesn't understand what a microphone is. And they're like, mick drop. 
<laughs> what did you just say? You just say it's a mic drop, it's a mic drop, which is also what you know McDonald's calls when they bring back the <laughs> they bring the, back the McRib. The McRib. It's they the go, mic drop. Time for the mic drop. Wow, we have so many good ideas on this. Yeah, we that should. we gotta start bleeping the heck out of our marketing schemes. Man. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, so, <laughs> so McRib, they just come to me. Yeah, they do. Uh, like a mic drop. <laughs> Uh, so McGregor, he he starts selling these these plots. Sure. Um, and uh, long story short, he ends up selling to 250 people who were like, "Yeah, this Mick sketchy guy uh, for how much is going to make me Mick rich." Um, so he ends up making he makes two hundred thousand dollars. He's been selling about thousand dollars a plot. Yeah, probably something like that. Yeah, uh, and and uh, the thing is that was what is this? 18, 1820s. Sure. Yeah, uh, it's quite a bit of money. In the UK. So yeah, this is he's making dough off of this. Yeah. Thing. And his whole plan. So are any of those people actually gonna go? Well, here's his whole plan. His whole plan is he sells just enough to where they're they can't afford an expedition to get out there, but enough where he's got a lot of money. Um what do you mean? So that his I so as part of the sale, he said he said, you can invest in it, and once I get enough people to invest in it. All finance a ship to take you out there so you can start oh, your settlement okay. and start building. Then you could just sink the ship. <laughs> <laughs> you could just. I mean, I guess that people. is that is an option. I suppose. Yeah. I'm gonna finance um, it. But you know, it's pretty close just to like, what you, you're, you're you're boarding it to go to your new home and <laughs> then what is it called, Poya or whatever <laughs> Poya, it is, yeah. and you just see Thomas McSketchy <laughs> or they're just drilling a hole in the boat. <laughs> What you doing? Oh, just, just fixing the boat. Just fixing the boat. You know the water in yeah. near Poya is interesting. You have I'm to, just so friendly. To, I'm doing it for free. And I blow through the boat. Man, that makes sketchy. Is so kind. Wow, what a good He's hearted so fellow. So kind. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, so he, uh, he he was trying to to sell just enough to where they couldn't afford this expedition. Well, then he sold them enough. <laughs> And he's like, "Frick! I have to buy this expedition now." Uh, and so he he goes and he puts together. Why do they all know? You could just not tell them. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of steps in this where it's like, you, McGregor, you're you could have made the, you could have made stuff. this legit. Yeah, yeah. You could have you could have drowned all of them. Yeah, <laughs> you had so many options. You could have not told them that you had enough for your. You could have been like, "We got to sell two more." It's a time in tell the world. Two of your friends, dude. This is what I'm saying, man. Now. So hard to get rich mm -hmm. in the 1800s. If I go back in time, I would be the richest person in the world. Yeah, because you can just lie, dude, and yeah. get away with it. Yeah, you can yeah. just go and be like, oh, "I'll sell you this land." You don't even have to own a land. You've never even had to been there. Yeah, everybody, everybody's been lied to too much now. They know. Yeah, they can, we can sniff it out. It, it, to be fair, to be fair, people sniffed it out when he was lying to them about stuff. So he wrote a book. And he printed some currency, and he made a map. Okay, and he got these drawings made. What was he door to door and sales so in this could, or what? Yeah, he was like, he was like, check he's out. Like, hey, he's like, he's like, I got this Tupperware. Hold on, let me open it up and Kinda, show you what's, what's in the Tupperware. It's he, money. No, and like, hold on, tell me more about that Tupperware. <laughs> guys in the guys in their in their twenties did the the Kirby <laughs> vacuums. Oh yeah, yeah. He's like, I got this vacuum. <laughs> let me show you what I've got inside <laughs> the bag. <laughs> Blows the money out the bag and like I want to know more about this vacuum. <laughs> yes, please tell me about the please vacuum. Please tell me more about the vacuum. Sure. I don't really care about your country. Tell me about the vacuum. What does that do? Uh, yeah, so he, it's 1820. It's they were actually they were, interested. They were very shocked. So, <laughs> okay, so he's now sending people over there. I just love the idea of a door to door salesman selling something like modern, but like kind of dumb, like Tupperware, like a vacuum. Um, Tupperware somehow slipping back in time and then thinking it's and he just makes a killing because everyone's like, oh my gosh, what is this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is this real? <laughs> so I just want to understand how the supply he's chain. Away. How does the supply chain work in this scenario? Well, he's does he have to coupons. go back to the future <laughs> to get more Tupperware to yeah. then go back? He's got how a semi he travel with the Tupperware to the past. He's got Let's a, run it out. Go he's, ahead. He's got a semi truck that he has to get up to eighty eight miles an hour. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. And the semi truck. And they're shows also up like in the neighborhood. And they're, they're like, more interested in the Tupperware <laughs> than they are the semi vehicle. That just <laughs> zooms saying, into the town out of massive. Nowhere. 
transportation <laughs> vehicle and they go let's that seal <laughs> what witchcraft is this yeah was, someone asked him about the truck and he's like oh that's just the biggest Tupperware you got to spend a lot and to he get that. went back and did Tupperware <laughs> He's got a YouTube channel now where he's like, he's like, he's like, I'm going to show you guys how Tup- I made a million dollars a Tup- month Tup- in a way. selling Tupperware to dummies from the 1560s. <laughs> <laughs> and you can do it for too. such minimal effort. You know, <laughs> this is true passive income. I call this past shipping and so <laughs> passive income, passive income. <laughs> And that's really the only way to do it. That's it the yeah. only way to make money in today's society <laughs> is to not exist in today's society. <laughs> that's really the only way to get ahead. The only way to get ahead is to go back to where you started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is to get behind and get ahead. Then, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like this concept. This uh, is good. <laughs> so yeah, McGregor was essentially doing that. Uh, he was he was going door to door telling everybody about all this stuff and people would ask him questions and they wouldn't believe him and then he would show all his paperwork and they'd be like, hmm, this seems a little bit more believable now. Here's an interesting thought I had on time travel <laughs> <laughs> just while we're here. Let's say time travel is real. Yeah, say it, you know, and everyone talks about going back and stopping Hitler. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah. But I saw a TikTok the other day that said, hey, no matter how dumb or bad you think you're doing in life, just remember, there's no time traveler who came back to stop you from doing what you're doing right now. <laughs> so you must not be doing that bad. And I was like, "Well, shoot, someone didn't stop Hitler." <clears throat> yeah. What yeah. if they stop something w- worse? Yeah, that's possible. And they were like, "Oh yeah, we let Hitler do his thing." Yeah. Because I came back and stopped the other thing. Because yeah, because there was more important things to worry about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's actually that's a um, <clears throat> if you want to get alieny. Uh, that <laughs> That's one of the theories because you know how they hang out around nuclear installations. Who aliens? Okay, the UFOs. One of you know the, how they hang out around nuclear situation stuff. Yeah, no, yeah, that's where the majority of UFO sightings are near where nuclear missiles are stored. Um, do and you have a map of this? Yes, we actually do. Uh, Who's we? Don't say we. <laughs> the United States government. Uh, Is that you? Why'd you say we? I'm part of. Why'd you say we? <laughs> I'm a part of it. I'm oh. a part of this country. I get to be a part of it. Timis, it's, a democ- it's by the people. Timis McCitizen. <laughs> Timis McCitizen. Okay. No, yeah, uh, but the there's a theory that that they've because they shut they shut off the arm systems there all the time. They is in the aliens. The aliens. Yeah, these they UFOs shut off the it, arm then, system. Yeah, the system that like actually will arm they it shuts it down when they're present. Okay, um, and so the theory goes that when these things show up around these nuclear batteries, they they disarm them because they have some knowledge about what's going on and they're disarming them to prevent this nuclear disaster. Interesting. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I was like I the that TikTok, I was like, well, I mean, if time travel is real, then I think we would have some other things. Yeah. Stopped. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. I don't think time travel is going to come back and keep me from. Unless, unless they have rules, like all the time travel shows where it's like you can't interfere. Like it's going to mess with the timeline. No. Like, have you watched Umbrella Academy? Nope. That's like a big part of the show. I'm not a nerd. That's a big part of the show is like this. Sure. Protecting the timeline. There's like police officers that patrol and stop people. From timeline police. The timeline. Yeah. Protect and serve. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. Hey, thanks for checking out our show. If you like it and you want to support, be a part of what we're doing here, you can do that by becoming a patron. Uh, what happens there is you get to be in the community. Uh, we have a Discord with our hosted producers. We have a lot of fun. We're super active in there every day. You get access to ad free content a week before everybody else. And we have a Zoom every month with our patrons. Uh, we hang out, we eat pizza, we get to know you a little bit better. Uh, it's a blast. And there's a ton of other uh, different benefits like merch discounts, uh, birthday messages, things like that, that are super cool. Uh, if you want to be in that, uh, you can just text Tillin to 66866 uh, and that'll get you right in there. Um, if not, we're just super glad that you're here uh, and thanks for watching our show. So, yeah, McGregor, <clears throat> he starts selling all, he sells all this land, he sells to 250 people and has to book this cruise okay. to, to the, the place. Um, and so he starts with a group of 50 was going to go first with the ship and the rest of 200 were going to come six months later. 
Um, and okay. so uh, he said he set that whole trip up. He told sure. everybody about it. He went on the boat and like this is sounding a lot like Elon and them and Mars, but go <laughs> ahead wore his suit and like showed up and had a cocktail hour and was like at, so excited for everybody. Please just tell a story. Good and God. Then, we've done too many <laughs> things and then he left. He left the ship and sent them on their way and then he moved to he France. didn't go with them. Yeah, he moved to France he just <laughs> shipped 50 people yeah, he shipped 50 people to the rainforest and then was like see you guys later. And he's like everybody the else shore. the rest Bye. of the 200 will be with you there in six months. They're going to leave soon. You're going to love the people there. Yeah, they're so nice. They're so friendly. And then he he losted these people. Is what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, they get to the <laughs> island and they're that's it. And then he he got on a train, moved to France, uh, and the the next voyage leaves, and they they're bringing 200 people. So after the next voyage did go though. Yeah, the next voyage did, okay. did go. So after a 17 week journey across the ocean um, to what is now Honduras, uh, they they make it to the land. And it's they're in one of those ships where it's like there's no dock there, so the ship can't go all the way up, and so they have to stop and they load into their little boats and they row their boats to the the shore. And the other, meanwhile, the big pirate ship that took them out there goes out back out to the Caribbean to be pirates or whatever they do. Whatever they do, yeah. So they left. Um, They're like, have fun, guys, and they're like, sweet, we'll have fun. And then they rowed their ways to shore, and they got to shore, and they realized there's not a town here. Uh, and so they walked up and down the coast trying to find this town. They're like, maybe the, maybe we went to the wrong spot. Yeah, sure. maybe the boat dropped us in the wrong spot. And surely that's what happened. After a couple of weeks, they started to realize there's nothing here. I think we got scammed, guys. Yeah, they also realized that this Mosquito Coast was called Mosquito Coast because there's mosquitoes everywhere. Sure, and it was so bad that they said that maybe if we leave the beach and try to go further inland into the jungle, there'll be less mosquitoes. That was wrong. There was a lot more. Um, and <laughs> so uh, eventually, uh, uh, oh, they also realized they also realized that when they started the journey, they were going to bring all their gold with them that they had amassed right. over the years. Like there's life savings, right? And uh, McGregor was like, "Hey, if you bring that gold, like you're going to weigh down the ship. Yeah. So why don't you? You're not going to need it. You can use just a legal Poison currency, and so I'll exchange it for your gold. And so they all exchanged. He all took their, their life savings. Yeah, he exchanged all their money." for his fake papers and so they had all this fake cash with them. This monopoly money. They were on this beach in Honduras, literally a different planet. Essentially, are they 200 on their way at this point? They are 200 are already on their way. Yeah, wow, Um, and they're trying to so eventually they do like they start creating a settlement. They start building places to stay and live. Um, It's a true survivor situation Um, and uh, a couple people got voted off the island, but for the majority, Stuck around for a little bit, and then the next two hundred showed up. Um, but the boat did the same thing; it just came far from shore. And they were like, them, no. and then sailed away. And they oh, all rode in. No, and, oh, and then everyone they, on the boats is like, "They're saying hi." You know, <laughs> they can't wait for us. Up. They're excited Welcome to see us. Welcome party. Welcome. Uh, no, they were already they they went inland to create their settlement, so they wouldn't see them on the beach. Oh. So these people rode in, and eventually they found them, and they're like, "Yeah, we got lied to." And everyone's like, "Excuse me, <laughs> hold on, what?" Welcome. welcome. We got scammed. <laughs> yeah, welcome to Poyas. We, it's now a country. It is now. Um, we just won the war. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, yeah. So um, this I'll, is our podcast studio. There's trains. <laughs> there's yeah. They, we we got, got scammed. We. <laughs> uh, so um, long. He, he doesn't listen to this. We're fine. <laughs> Long story short, um, over the next uh, uh, what is this uh, year? Uh, these people tried to survive on this island, and uh, some of them did. The majority of them got malaria, or starved, or whatever. Um, and majority is in like what two hundred of them? One hundred and eighty out of the two hundred and fifty people that were there died. Um, and eventually, a search party came. Um, and was like, hey, like we haven't heard from you guys. We expected to get letters back or something because you guys are in this like new world where you're supposedly making a lot of bank. And, and they were like, like <laughs> 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 you know, they were just so devolved <laughs> into this crazy like, pre- <laughs> <laughs> you know, and like whoa. Well, okay. they did show up and they were like emaciated and diseased, oh, and covered sure. in sores from all the bug bites and stuff that they were getting. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, so the the. They picked them back up. They took them back to the UK. Sure. Um, meanwhile, 
uh, <laughs> he's gone. He's yeah. in France. Uh, he escaped the whole ordeal. Um, and so they get back and they're like, oh, it was a scam. Like everybody, uh, like he lied to us. And they're, and they're like, government was like so close to this guy. Like he had an, ingrained himself in society so well and made sure. himself out to be like this trusted person that nobody believed them. Everyone's like, you probably just landed at the wrong spot. Like they were like, they're like, no, he's a good guy. He wanted to do that to you. So like, the government gaslit him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, and so they were trying to prosecute the government. Like, your friend group. <laughs> that's like, hey, my boyfriend's really mean to me. <laughs> I was like, he's a nice guy. He's such a good guy. You think there's no oh way. My gosh. I don't if you that. were single and on Tinder right now to see what's going on, like you should just be grateful <laughs> for what you have. Uh, so so Meanwhile, he bought you a Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> he sent you to a new world. I did all that. Just, you know, I'm really mean to her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he, he meanwhile is in France trying to run the same scheme. Yeah. Again, getting close to Macron. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's, there's upheaval in the UK. Yeah. But in France, he's selling more land. Yeah. Uh, same spot. Same spot. He's like, you're not gonna believe it. He's like, I just heard 180 spots just opened up. Yeah, we've got lots of land. Well, he has no idea what's happened yet. Ah, he knows. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> he knows. He doesn't. Well, he doesn't know, but he knows. He no? knows. Like he knows, but he yeah. doesn't know. Yeah. And so he's he's selling stuff. He's in France. selling the same land. But in yeah, but in France, the French are not believing him they're because like, he doesn't build the same reputation in France that he had built in like, the we? UK. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so some uh, some French officials at the time, the the British government and France, they did not communicate at all. Right. And so they didn't know what was going on. They didn't the Brit- Britain had no idea that he was there. France had no idea that he had done what he did yeah. there, but they started digging into some things and they basically were able to narrow down that Poyas doesn't exist. So they arrested him uh, and they put him on trial. And How did they figure it out? Did, did we know? I like think they what went there. tipped them off. I think they went there. They went there. <laughs> they were like, "Hey, we just checked. That's not real." Uh, it took them a long time. <laughs> they were like, yeah, we're gonna a, verify that's this." A, that's a, like a twenty week there, twenty week back journey. Yeah, yeah and they're like, they're like, "Turns out, you're lying." Uh, and so, <laughs> <laughs> me lie? no lie. I would never lie. So he gets arrested. He goes on trial, uh, and. Uh, in the trial, they they started kind of digging into everything, saying that he made everything up. Uh, but his lawyer was able to fight for him and say, "You can't prove any of this isn't real." Uh, and somehow it worked. What? Somehow it worked. I guess the government didn't do a good enough job gathering their you evidence. You can't prove that it's not real. Yeah, and so because because the government didn't do a good enough job gathering and presenting its evidence in court, he got. To walk. Oh, free. really? If it's not real, then how does this sketch exist? Yeah, prove it. <laughs> I've got plenty. He had all these documents. He had all these books. He had all this stuff. True. And the government was just like, "Yeah, we went and we checked it. It's not there." And he's like, "Well, we got all this." And the court was like, "I don't know. You guys don't have that yeah. much evidence. Like, you just you're saying it's not real, but like, it looks pretty real." This is the same thing that people in our YouTube comments do <laughs> on like the Valiant Thor stuff. Yeah, they go, "Look, the pictures exist. They're real." I go, yeah, dude. I mean, there's a Do whole movie research. of Hogwarts, and that doesn't exist. <laughs> I mean, you can't prove it doesn't. Sure, <laughs> I don't have enough evidence. You, I, you know what? And I wouldn't take you to court over it. <laughs> uh, so he gets to walk free. Um, uh, meanwhile, everyone's getting gaslit in Great Britain. Sure, to the point where some of the survivors of the event start to agree, and they're like, they're like, you know what? I think he. I, I think, think I did make did. this up in my head. No, they're, they're, yeah, they're like, I think we did land in the wrong spot and like it's the ship's fault. So they actually go after the captain of the ships and he's that, like, guys, I've been there. spending my year plugging all these holes <laughs> guys. I, yeah, you guys don't didn't see what he was doing <laughs> before we left <sighs> and so uh, these captains actually lost their their licenses, Boats? their boat license. I don't know if they had those back then, but they lost their ability to be captains anymore. They got that taken away from them because because they obviously went to the wrong spot. Yeah, because it was their fault. They went to the wrong place. Um, and, and what is interesting uh, 
is wow. At, at the end of all of this, he he made about two million dollars. Uh, then two million then right from selling fake stuff to people in France and UK and other uh, countries along the way where he was just driving around sure selling this stuff. Um, what's interesting is it uh, it led to uh, the two thousand or not 2000 the, <laughs> the 2008, 2008 financial crisis <laughs> uh, no it led to the uh uh 1826 um financial collapse which resulted in the collapse of 12 banks um and it was the first uh financial collapse in history that couldn't be contributed to an outside event. It was something within the economy that caused the crash um, and it was and him we, stealing something they didn't have value and it, yeah, it was him selling all this stuff to people. They were selling their life savings and eventually it had the same effect that most of economic crashes have where eventually it turned into like this bank run situation. And yeah, all the banks have ended up having to shut down um, and failing uh, and it was what a lot of economists say it was the beginning of our current economic cycle of Boom, followed by bust, boom, followed by bust, boom, followed by bust. Um, this was the beginning of that cycle. Um, was this guy going and <laughs> making up a country and selling it to a bunch of people? Wow. Um, he I don't believe Canada's real. <laughs> you want to sell it? I don't have any proof that Canada is real. <laughs> yeah, they're lying to us about that. Yeah, dude. That's they're, a freaking. That's a. You want to sue them? CNN wants you to believe that Canada's real. <laughs> I hate them, man. <laughs> Even the word Canadian, Canadian, it's made up. This sounds stupid. It's just Michigan. <laughs> Go up there, bro. I'm serious. It's just Michigan light. Michigan Mich- light. Michigan light. <laughs> yeah. Michigan ultra, if Michigan you will. Michigan ultra. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> he uh, he never faced the music. For everything he did, yeah, he caused not. a massive financial disaster, ruined a bunch of people, killed 180 people, really. Um, and the uh, mosquitoes did that. You can't prove that. <laughs> I guess. Hey, I'll defend him. <laughs> I guess. Uh, and uh, in the eight, early 1830s, he ended up moving to Venezuela, where he lived out the rest of his days uh, as the king of the nation of Payas. Uh, and uh, he was shocked when he got there and it was real, dude. <laughs> he was like, Venezuela. Venezuela is a real place. <laughs> okay. I, I thought you guys were making this wow. up. Uh, so, yeah. So, he um, has gone into history as uh, one of the most significant cons in history um, in terms of its impact to the yeah. world. He made a lot of money off of it, but its impact was huge. And also, the lengths he went to make it seem believable. It, he almost. For not much more effort, he could have started a real nation and been like, "Yeah, it's brand new." He would have made more money that way, I think. Yeah, if he would have, if he would have just done a little bit extra work and then just said, "It's brand new," like you can go start it. Like it sucks right now, but if you start it, you're a settler. Yeah, you're a settler. You're gonna bring in, a, create a new land, and it's gonna be awesome. A new frontier. Yeah, it's gonna be a great place. We have semis and Tupperware. <laughs> And they're like, can you explain both of those? You can't found a nation on Tupperware. (laughs) (laughs) Ziploc, maybe. Tupperware, no. Mm -mm. Uh, So, uh, very significant, influential person. um, What was their uh, cons? What was their national anthem? Uh, It was interesting. Uh, So, there's actually a picture of him. Uh, I'll show (laughs) you. (laughs) I don't. I didn't have this in um, in my list of things to show you. Here's a picture of him. Um, by the this way, checks out, that, dude. Yeah, he looks like he looks like a liar. He looks like he works at Best Buy. Like if you don't have all the fancy clothes, like his face in the sideburns, he does look like a Best Buy employee. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But like, mm, here he is. Oh. Uh, playing the flute. Oh no, that's a that's, that's a sword. Just nice. He's licking a sword. Yeah. Uh, what's on the floor? Uh, his hat. His cap. Oh, I Scottish. Was a, I thought that was a bicycle seat with a red ping pong ball. Yeah, it was one thing he accidentally <laughs> brought back from the future was a bicycle seat. And was like, what? Well, no Next bikes to a were around tombstone back or what? I He's standing so. on the grave of all 180 <laughs> people that he killed. He's <laughs> like, I'm so rich. Let me kiss my sword. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, the 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 national anthem. Uh, it was a, a fiddle off. Nice. Yeah.
Hey, thanks for making it to the end of this video. Uh, if you like this and you want more episodes, there's more somewhere around here and also clips from the show. Uh, but make sure you subscribe. Please do that. That really helps us. Um, it makes us feel good. We look at the number and we go, oh my gosh, there's more people who like us. Um, and it also just makes sure that you don't miss episodes in the future because we put these out every single week. And there's so many in the past, so many old episodes you can go watch. And you know there's an entire season of episodes that we didn't even have a video for. So you can go listen to those if you'd like to as well. Thanks for being here. We'll see you again next week on on things I learned last night. That's this podcast, called, right? right? That's this one? Yeah, that's the one. Things that's, I learned last night. That's the one. All right, you're free to go. Great.